Our story today is called Swashby and the Sea. Captain Swashby loved the sea. You see, and he had been friends for a long, long time. She knew him in and out, up and down, and better than anyone. So when Swashby retired, it was to a small house on a small beach as close to the sea as he could be. Whenever he needed something, the sea provided exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. Life was just the way Swashby liked it. Salty and sandy and serene until squeaks and squeals sprang from the empty house next door, which was no longer empty. It had been commandeered by a girl and her granny who planted umbrellas, scattered beach chairs, and boarded Swashby's deck without permission. Swashby battened down the hatches, hid when the doorbell rang, and fed their oatmeal cookies to the gulls. He didn't need neighbors. He didn't want neighbors. Neighbors were nosy, a nuisance, annoying. So in return, he left a message written clearly in the sand. No trespassing which the sea fiddled with just a little bit. Sing, the girl read and did just that. She sang every song she knew while dancing up and down Swashby's deck. What now, she asked. Now vanish, Swashby wrote later that evening, adding a starfish exclamation point. And the sea fiddled just a little. Wish, the girl read, picking up the starfish, and did just that. She closed her eyes and began, I wish, no, no, Swashby interrupted, stomping down the steps. If you mean to make a starfish wish, you must say this, starfish back to wave so blue, you see, we'll see a wish come true. How lovely, Granny said. We wish you'd come for a cup of tea, Mr. Swashby but Swashby wished to be left alone. So he grumbled and mumbled and hurried inside. He didn't need tea. He didn't want tea. Tea was civilized, friendly, neighborly. What he needed was a new message. Please go away, he wrote firmly in the sand. And once again, the sea fiddled just a little. Play, the girl sounded out and did just that with Swashby's shells and stones with his buckets and shovels, but her towers kept falling. Barnacle bottoms, Swashby muttered, marching out. You're doing it all wrong. You must not use the sunbaked sand. It's the sea sand does the trick. And he showed her how to dig for the wet sand below. Ank, but Swashby was gone. Before long, amazing sculptures decorated the beach. It's the clamshells you should be using, Swashby called from inside. Come play, Mr. Swashby, the girl called back. Swashbys don't play, he answered, banging the shutters. So the sea decided to meddle more than just a little. She inched her way up the sand and tickled the girl's toes. She nibbled on the sculptures and slurped away the bucket. The girl tried to grab it, but look at me, the girl called. Look at her, Granny gasped. Oh dear, look at her, Granny hurried to the water's edge, but Swashby was already there. What are you up to, you great salty imp, he asked, scooping up the girl in the bucket. With a great big wave, the sea delivered the pair back to shore. And though it, there was no stopping the laughing and thinking, thanking and hugging that was Swashby's reward. I see what you did. He whispered to the sea as he was whisked away to celebrate. After that, it was easy for Swashby to have tea with the girl and her granny and ice cream and lobster and s'mores on the beach. It was easy for him to share his special sea glass. It was even easy for him to see that neighbors could be fun and friends and family. And when he had a moment to himself, Swashby carved a heartfelt message for the sea. Thank ye, friend, which the sea fiddled with just a little bit. The end. And that is the end of our story. Thanks for joining me today.